chapter 20, verses 11 through 15. And Brother Mike, will you read us those verses? Well, I'll get around to that for a minute. <laughs> Do I believe that the Lord uses doctors to heal people? Absolutely. Absolutely He does. But we should go to Him first. Amen. Uh, next Sunday morning at 9.30, down in the basement, anybody know what's happening? Anybody know what's going on? Bubba's babies. Bubba's babies. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> next Sunday morning at 9.30, everyone, welcome. You know, uh, everybody come. Pray for my wife. She's got a bad case of the shingles. Oh. I've never had the shingles. I'm sure some of you people here have. Yes. I've heard it is the most painful thing you can have. So she, she didn't have about a week. And she was really hurting bad. And uh, she went to the doctor. Got some medicine. Now, my wife's an RN. She's been a nurse for like over 45 years. She does not like to take medicine. But anyway, she went to the doctor and got some strong stuff, you know, to knock that out. <coughs> but we're laying in bed the other night, and she's having a dream. And she's calling out the name Joe. <laughs> And, you know, if their wife was having a dream and called out another man's name, that would hurt their little male ego. But that, that didn't bother me. But anyway, my point is, and she told me, she said, I, could, I was dreaming and I could hear myself calling out the name Joe. And she said, I don't even know what Joe. But she said, I could hear myself do it and I couldn't, I couldn't do it. But anyway, those drugs were so powerful and so strong. They do things to our mind that we, we don't want. Amen? Amen? Amen. And in life, we have all kinds of pains, right? Physical pain, emotional pain. And our point is, we've got to be careful of what we allow to influence us what we allow to change us. And, and you know, she said, she said, I, I, I tried, I, I, couldn't, I couldn't help myself. But anyway, Revelation, chapter 20, verse 11. It reminds me. The great white throne judgment. Then I saw a great white throne, and him who sat on it, and whose face the earth and the heaven fled away. And there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, standing before God, and books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged according to their works by the things which were written in the books. The sea gave up the dead who were in it, and death and Hades delivered up the dead who were in them, and they were judged, each one according to his works. <coughs> then death and Hades were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And anyone not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. 
if you've been with us very long, you know that we've been, uh, we started out, we went with the four horsemen of the apocalypse. We went from there, we went to the seven vials or seven bowls, seven super bowls, as I call them, being poured out upon people. Yes. Now we get to the final event of all human history. Yes. God's putting that last period on that last sentence, on that last paragraph, on that last page, and this is the final judgment of all who've died lost. Yes. All who've never repented and never received Christ as their Savior. So this is very serious, and we need to give this a lot of attention we're going to today. It's not easy to preach about this final judgment. I take absolutely no pleasure whatsoever in thinking about anybody being thrown into a lake of fire for all eternity. And I'm going to tell you what, God doesn't take pleasure in it either. Man. Because see, God never made hell for people. Hell was made for uh, the devil That's right. and his angels. That's right. uh, and, and, and people who end up in hell are those people who reject God's way of escape, God's escape plan. And they never get saved. God doesn't send people to hell. Sin sends people to yes. hell. Yes. Amen. 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 If we say no to God's provision, to God's way out, to God's <laughs> salvation, the only alternative for us is hell. We can't remain neutral. We can't remain neutral. God's love and He loves us so much He took our hell for us if we'll repent of those sins which He died for. But He is holy and perfect. Yes. And if we don't accept His payment for our sins, you know what? We'll pay for them ourselves. And that's what we're talking about today. Yes. We can look at this as the darkest hour of human history. This is the supreme court of the universe. And all lost souls are going to be judged. And after the verdict is read, it's final. There aren't going to be any appellate courts. There aren't going to be any appeals. The sentence is life, death, it's kind of a death row in a torture chamber all wrapped up in one with no end for all eternity. And I'm going to tell you, I'm not going to be politically correct, and, and some people are not going to believe this, but I'm going to tell you their arguments with God and not me, because if I ever preach the sermon straight from the Word of God, then this is it. Seven aspects of the great white throne of judgment. We'll have the courtroom, we'll have the judge, we'll have the accused, we'll have the evidence, the defense, and the, and the verdict and the sentence. Yes. The courtroom. It says in verse 11, the great white throne. We need to stop right there. These three words represent three great things. Great speaks of power. The lost are going to stand, be standing before the, the throne and they'll be overcome with the with this sense of awe and power and fear. And, and you hear people talking about, oh yeah, when I get there, I'm going to tell God this and I'm going to say that. No, you ain't. <laughs> no, you ain't. You're going to be weeping and crying yes. and shaking as you stand before the mighty God. Yes. And you might you might be thinking back, oh, I remember the time I took his name in vain, but I can't do that now. Um, You're going to be thinking about all the jokes I told about hell. But you'll know today, it's not a joking matter. Hey, We're not hey, going to be hey, joking hey. about it. You may remember what you used to think about hell, but now as you see what's going to happen, it becomes that reality to you, and it sinks in, and all those little jokes you used to tell about, oh, I'll take uh, uh, hell for the company and, and heaven for the climate, and I prefer company over climate, those are going to be really out the door then because you're going to realize <laughs> what's going to happen. Yeah. Amen? Hebrews 10, 31 says, It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of a living God. Uh, and Hebrews 12, 29 says, For our God is a consuming fire. Yes. How dare we think we could ever stand in front of God in anything but speechlessness. Amen. 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 And, and, and then you've got to notice how this judgment begins, the disposing of the earth. In verse 11 it says, Heaven and earth and heaven fled away. We realize that everything we ever lived for is gone. Everything that we, we, we put our trust in, we put our faith in, is gone. All our possessions, all our pleasure, all our popularity, that prestige we want, all the family, children, gone, disposed of, there's nothing left. 
nothing left except God and, and God's here to dispose of us now. Oh, yes. In the end, all we have left are our souls. Oh, yes. That's why Jesus said, For what shall it profit a man if he shall if he shall gain the whole world and lose us his soul? Right. So great stands for power. Then we have why. Great why. Why speaks of purity and, and it speaks of that unapproachable purity of the Lord Jesus Christ. And why is that important? It's important because many on that day will stand before God and they'll say, hey, I, I, I was a good person. Uh, I've done all this stuff for you. I, but, that, but that's not, not going to mean anything when you compare it to God's purity, to right. God's unapproachable purity. The only way you and I can be pure enough to stand before God is to be washed in the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Isaiah says, Come now and let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they will be as white as snow. Yes. Though they be like crimson, they shall be as wool. And the psalm says, Purge me, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. You see that? You see the power? It's great. We see the purity and it's white and the throne now. The throne, God Himself is going to be in charge. He'll be calling the shots on this day, I guarantee you. I know uh, the people like to drag His name through the mud and make fun of us because we're followers of His. But on that day, God's going to sit on that throne. He's yeah. going to sit on it in purity and in power. Yeah. And, every, and everybody's going to be shaking and they're going to be trembling. And, and they're going to think about all the chances that He's gave them to accept Him as their Savior. And, 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 and all that time He allowed them to run free, to choose. And, but on that day, He's going to sit on that throne and He's going to be the King of Kings. Amen. Yeah. First Timothy says, which in his time shall he shew who is blessed and only, and the only Ponte, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And you'll either put him on that throne in your heart today, or you're going to stand before that great white throne of judgment on that day. In verse 11 it says, there was no place there was found no place for them. And what that literally means is there's no place to run, no place to hide. Yes. In the Garden of Eden, when Adam sinned, he tried to hide behind the tree. Uh, well, uh, on this day, there ain't going to be any trees. Okay. So Jonah, when he sinned, he tried to take a boat and get away from it all. And I'm going to tell you, there ain't going to be any transportation away from here. There's going to be no fig leaves, nothing. Just the ugly nakedness of our sin is going to be exposed. There's going to be nowhere to run. Every excuse is going to be stripped away. There isn't going to be any. It's going to be one-on-one, -on -one, the sinner and the Savior at that great white throne. Yes. Amen. Yes. That's the courtroom. Now we're going to see the judge. The judge. Verse 11. Him that sat on it. Who's the judge of the universe? And I got a hint for you. It's not the Father. It's not the Father because in John 5.22 it says, For the Father judgeth no man, but hath committed all judgment unto the Son. Amen. So this is that real sweet Savior that we read about in the Gospel, that little Lamb of God going after that, that one little Lamb. Well, I'm going to tell you, He's no longer the Lamb of God right now, but He's the Lion of Judah. We ain't got to stand as a Redeemer. He's the Ruler, and the Savior is now sovereign. Amen? Yes. And that's going to be who's going to be judged. Yes. Acts says because He has He has appointed a day in which He will judge the world in righteousness by that man whom He has ordained. Therefore, He has given assurance unto all men that in He has raised Him from the dead. Some will only come on Easter. They think they're going to heaven. They're going to be in front of the resurrected Christ wondering why they're there. And it's that same Christ that they rejected. If they never sold their heart to, they might have come to church one day. But He's going to go. Amen. I remember a story about a... a, a a, a guy was drowning in a lake and a fisherman was out there and he come and saved the guy. 
the guy was a, a criminal and he, he continued on to his criminal path after he was saved. He got arrested and he went to court and he looked up and the judge was the same guy that saved him. And he said, oh, oh thank goodness you're here. And the judge said, just because I saved you a year ago don't mean I won't judge you today. That's the courtroom and the judge, right? Now we've got the accused. Who's the accused? Verse 12, it says everybody. Big shots, nobody. Up and cover, down and out. CEOs, uh, lowest employee professors, uneducated, kings and homeless. They're all accused on that day if they die lost. Yes. In verse 13, it says this is the second resurrection, the resurrection of the lost. The first resurrection was of the saints and it was way before this, okay? In other words, it isn't about whether they're guilty or innocent. This isn't that kind of judgment. It's clear that they're guilty. This is not a trial to see whether they go free or not. This is not about allegations. This is about making it clear why you are going to hell. Right. Amen. They've already been in there just awaiting judgment here. It's kind of like I was telling Brother Butch earlier. It's kind of like when you sign that plea bargain. I'll talk to what 90% of my people here understand. <laughs> Amen. 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 Okay? It's a done deal. But you've still got to go before the judge to get that final. And that's what's, that's what's going on here. It's a done deal. You done died lost. You're going to hell. But you're going before the white throne of judgment. They're going to tell you why you're going to hell. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. <laughs> There's a couple words for hell in the scripture. Hades is one of them, and they can be linked like a, a local jail or prison. It's kind of a temporary holding place, but it's no less vile, no more or less hot, no more or less terrible yeah. than what hell's going to be. Yeah. Notice in uh, verse uh, in the notice the words in verse 13, 14. The words death and hell. Death gives up the body. Hell gives up the soul. Both apply. Uh, in both body and soul are cast into the eternal lake of fire. There's no appeal. There's no parole. There is not. There's no good lawyer getting you out of this. I'll tell you right now. I want to talk about the four groups that are going to be at the great white throne of justice. The, the ones who hate God and don't mind speaking out about it. They hate the church. They don't believe the Bible. They're in your face like uh, Madeline Murray O'Hare when she got uh, everything taken out of the schools. People like that, they're going to be one group. Next group is going to be the self-righteous. Those who think they're going to heaven because they live a good life. They think the gospel, that gospel is for perverts, thieves, and murderers. They don't see themselves as a real sinner. The Pharisees and the public have both prayed at the same altar. The Pharisee says, thank God I'm not like this person. I'm not like a sinner. The public had said, I'm a sinner. God, forgive me. And only one got saved that day. Right, right. And it wasn't the Pharisee. Yeah. There's no big sin, no little sin. It only takes one sin to send you to heaven. And nobody can get to heaven by good works. Right. Isaiah says, but we are all as unclean things and our righteousness is as filthy rags. Right. Amen. Another group that's going to be there is the slow deciders. They know they get saved, but they, they, they want to get saved, and they're going to get saved someday, but they keep putting it off. I mean, I'm going to tell you, the road to hell is paved with good intentions. But the Bible makes it plain how important it is to deal with this immediately. In Hebrews it says, Today, if you will hear His voice, Pardon not your heart. Second Corinthians says, Behold now is the accepted time. Behold now is the day of salvation. Slow deciders need to know there's no second chance at this white, great white throne. Just in Noah's day, there was years of warning and years of preaching, yet suddenly that door slammed shut, the sky began to fall, and it was too late. 
I'm going to tell you something today. This could be the last sermon that you ever hear. Amen. And you say, oh, you're trying to scare me. Yeah, I'm trying to scare you. I'd rather scare you into heaven than blow you into hell with some Amen. kind of soft soap message today. Amen. Amen. Then there's going to be the Sunday church goers. The ones who have their name on the church roll, but not in the Lamb's Book of Life. Amen. They'll go to hell with a Bible in their hand. I tell you, they will. And the devil doesn't care about that at all, because he just assumed he just soon send us to hell from the church house of the whorehouse. That's right. Amen. 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 I tell you, Amen. they might have a fancy suit or nice dress or a Sunday school attendance pin or an <laughs> offering statement, but they, <laughs> but they might not never accept the Jesus right. Christ. Because it says you must be born again. Yeah, man. Tells them like it is, doesn't it? Man. How about you? Where do you fit? You fit in one of these groups? You can be saved today. Yeah. Avoid this scene at the great white stone and all that comes with it. Yeah. I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to tell you something real quick. The groups that, when we talk about the groups that's going to be there, the Sunday church go, I'm going to tell you something. If you've accepted Christ and you're living in sin and you continue to sin, if you willingly, willingly sin, you're not saved. Right. You're not saved. And I'm not going to tell you you are just to get you to like me because that's, that's, that's not what I'm supposed to do. If you continue, if you continue, you know what it is? If you if you ask the Lord into your heart and you continue to sin, you're in open rebellion to God. Yeah. There is no other way to put it. That's right. There is no other way to put it. <coughs> this is a fact. So I don't want anybody to think they're all right when they're not. Amen. Are you Amen. Amen. Yeah. We got the evidence coming up. We got the defense, the verdict, and the sentence. The evidence. Verse 12, books. It says books. Not book, books. What are these books? I think there's three books open on that day. The Book of Works. The Lost Person's Life. It's, it's according to their work. You need to realize that God records your works, your sins, and, and on Judgment Day, nothing's going to be hidden. The books are going to be open, and you ask, how can God do this? Because He's God. Amen. Because he's God. I don't need to say anything. I can use some big words like he's omnipotent. He's, he's, he's omnipotent. I can use those words, but he's God. Yes. Amen. Yes. Psalm yes. says, The Lord, thou hast searched me and known me. Thou knowest my downsetting and my uprising. Thou knowest my thoughts afar off. Ezekiel says, And the Spirit of the Lord fell on me and said unto me, I know the things that come into your mind, every one of them. Second Peter, having eyes, having eyes full of adultery that cannot cease from sin. Psalms, for there is not a word in my tongue, O Lord, that thou knowest not. For the eyes of God run to and fro through the whole earth, and I can go on and on. Matthew, but I say unto you, every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. That's gossip, that's slander, that's criticism, yeah. that's lies, that's jokes, that's everything. Every yeah. word yeah. and every deed is going to be answered for, and God's camera is always running. Yeah. Amen. 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 Every word, every deed, yeah. every thought. Jeremiah says, I, the Lord, search the heart. He knows it all. So the law, the first book open is your life, the book of your works. Amen. Amen. It says in Ecclesiastes, for God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. So you know the homosexual crowd that says, "What goes on behind closed doors and nobody's business?" One of these days, it's going to be God's business. Yeah, right. The the, the abortion. The abortionists that say what a woman does with her body is nobody's business, one day it's going to be God. Yes. That teenager that says what I do is none of your business, one of these days it's going to be God. Yes. Man. The president that says what I do 
Because nobody's business won't be saying it's going to be God's business. Amen. Amen. First book, first book is works. Thank God we've been saved. It's not a license to sin because there's going to be consequences if we continue to sin. As I said earlier, there's going to be consequences. We'll look at the second book. I think the second book opens going to be the Bible. I think so. Because in John 12 it says, The word I have spoken the same shall judge him in the last day. That's what that's the spoken word of God. I think the Bible is the standard in which the lost will be judged one day. Two books are now open, aren't they? Yes, sir. The book of Light, or the book of uh, Words and the Bible. They're they're totally opposite ends, aren't they? Yes. Totally opposite ends. You know, we don't know how sinful we are until we look at that book of works compared to the Bible. We see how righteous God is. And, and that's, that's the people at the law, the, the white throne are going to see that. They're going to see how, how sinful they were and how perfect God's plan was for them and how they rejected it. And, and, and they will know that, that justice will be served. And that justice isn't going to happen. God's, God's, God's standard for righteousness is perfection. I'm going to tell you this right now. Just think about this. If you're hanging from a cliff by a chain with ten links, how many have to break before you fall? <laughs> think about that. Uh, Revela Revelation, Revelation 21 says, And there shall be no wise, no wise enter into anything that be defiant. Neither whatsoever worketh abomination or maketh the light. They shall, but they which are written in the Lamb's book of life. Nobody's perfect but Christ. And that's why we receive it from you, the free gift. I got saved and God made a trade with me. He said, I'll trade you your sin for my righteousness. Oh, yes. And that's the trade you made with each and every one of us. The first part, book open is the book of works. The second book is the Bible. Comparing. Comparing God's righteousness to our sin. We look at the sin book, we see our it's like we watch a movie of our life. And then we compare that to the Bible. Okay? The third book. Revelation 20, 15 says, and whosoever. Whosoever, love that. Whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Yes. This is the final nail in the coffin. If you've been saved and truly saved and your name's written there, then this is not for you. Right. Truly saved. There's one sin will send you straight to hell. And that's the sin of unbelief. Yes. The unpardonable sin, we've heard it say, the sin of blasphemy against the Holy Ghost, rejecting the promptings of the Spirit to put your faith in Christ for your salvation. If you get saved and your name isn't written there, it's not God's fault. Right. If you think you're saved and you find out your name's not written there, it's not God's fault. It's your fault. It's your fault. Amen. And if you're not saved, and you're going to the great white throne of justice, in our uh, judgment, it's too late. It's too late. Uh, can't do anything about it. You've had the evidence presented. It's too late. Yeah. Now we go to the defense. There is no defense. Got <laughs> news for you. What do you say? There is no defense. It's black and white. There's no evidence. There's no denying it. There's no no defense. You're guilty. Some people say, "Well, I'll throw myself on the mercy of court and say, now I believe in Jesus. Jesus, please forgive me. Save me now.' Well, in Hebrews it says, and it is appointed unto men 
wants to die, but after this is the judgment. I don't yeah. see any mercy here. Yeah. Don't see any mercy, only judgment. If you want grace, you can have it now, but if you die, don't look for it. Amen? Amen. Amen. That's right. Okay, we got no defense, so here's the verdict. Guilty. Guilty. <laughs> guilty. That's the only word you're going to hear that the great right throne of judgment is guilty. Yes. Matthew says, when they, Then shall he say unto them that on the left hand, Depart from me, you cursed, into the everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels. Yes. The sentence. That's the sentence now. Mm -hmm. Verse 15. Literal fire. I believe that. Yes. I believe that. I believe uh, every shred of evidence in the Bible says yes. Liberal theologians say no. The spirit. But Jesus called hell a place of fire and torment. Yes. Where people die forever and never completely die. I'll take Jesus' word for it over anybody else. No matter how many degrees he has behind his name, he doesn't know how many degrees it is in hell, I can tell you that. I'll stand on that fact no matter how politically incorrect I am. Yes. And, and I want to tell you, I want to tell you, I would much rather take my chance of standing before God and hear him say, Brett, you took my word way too literally. Uh, then they hear him say, Brett, you explained it away way too easy. Yeah. Amen. Right. Amen. Luke 16 tells of a man in hell who said, I'm tormented in the flame. Yes. But even if it is, let's just say it is figurative. How bad does it have to be that they use fire as the figure for how bad it is? Right. Amen? Right. It's something awful. Uh, it's something awful. I'm telling you right now, I think it's fire. I know it. I, I know it's fire. Yes. And we're mostly Christians in this room, so you're saying, well, let's, let's make this application to us. We're not going to be at the white throne of judgment for say. How can this help us today, Brother Brett? How can, how can you how can you bring this up? You know, some, most of us are saying, well, not all of us are saying. Amen. Amen. That's right. And a lot of us think we are, but we're not. Amen. And if we are, we need to hear this. We need to do what we can to keep people out of hell. Yeah. Our loved ones. Yeah. Are you yes. hearing me? Yes. People you don't even know, you don't want them to go to hell. Right. Have you witnessed anybody like that? Did you invite anybody to church this morning? Who do you wish was here for to hear this message today? Do you know by now that if you bring them to this church, I'm going to give them the truth? Yes. Who do you need to talk, talk about and tell about this sermon this week? Thank you. And I'm thankful if you're saved, your sins have been judged. But I'm going to ask you this, have you worshipped him like? Have you are worshipped him for that perfect plan that he gives you? We've seen the courtroom. We've seen the judge. We've seen the accused. We've seen the evidence. We've seen the defense. We've seen the burdens. And we've seen the sins. Now what are we going to do? I'm going to ask. Today. If people have something going on in their life that, that it's making them not sure. Maybe making them doubt just a little. I don't know. Making them, maybe not. I don't know. I'm just... If there's something going on in your life, I beg you to name. Come up to this altar. We're going to take some time. Look, look, Bob, I'm 10, 15 minutes early. We're going to take some time. 